Which is better, the Motorola Moto G Power or the Samsung Galaxy A51? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with my comparison between the Moto G Power versus the Samsung Galaxy A51. Now the A51 is a little bit more upmarket and premium compared to the Moto G Power, and you'll see that, that as we go through the various specifications of these two devices, this phone pretty much always is better. But with that being said, I know that both of these devices are being offered at a variety of different carriers, and you might be curious if it's worth spending the extra money for the A51 over the Moto G Power. And that's the purpose of this video. Now starting off with the displays, there are many similarities and also some differences. Now the Moto G Power features a large 6.4 inch display, but the display with the A51 is even bigger at 6.5 inches. You can see when holding the two phones up next to each other, they actually are about the same size, but due to the smaller bezels, we are able to fit a bigger display into the frame of the A51. Now with the Moto G Power, we're getting an IPS LCD display compared to a Super AMOLED display with the Samsung Galaxy A51. Now the brightness on both devices is at 100%, and you can see that the A51 is the brighter phone of the two, but in addition to that, you're gonna be getting better viewing angles and better colors in general. So I would say that the display technology with the A51 is certainly quite a bit better than what we're getting with the Moto G Power. Now both phones do feature a 1080p display. With the Moto G Power, we're getting a PPI of 399 compared to a PPI of 405 with the Galaxy A51. And then with the Moto G Power, we're getting a 19 by nine aspect ratio compared to a 20 by nine aspect ratio with the A51. So the A51 is a bit more narrow and taller compared to the Moto G Power, which is a little bit on the wider side. But both phones do have a nice form factor overall. Now taking a look up top, we do have some differences when it comes to the front-facing camera. Now both front-facing cameras are hole punches, but you can see with the Moto G Power, it is situated off to the top left, whereas with the A51, it's situated in the center. Now with the Moto G Power, we're getting a 16 megapixel front-facing camera, compared to a 32 megapixel front-facing camera with the A51. Now internally, with the Moto G Power, we're getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and with the Galaxy A51, we're getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage, so twice the amount of internal storage. And then with both devices, we are getting microSD card expansion. Now there is no wireless charging with either of these two devices, but they do both feature fingerprint sensors, so we'll give them a try right now. So with the Moto G Power, the fingerprint sensor is on the back, and you can see that was nice and quick. And then with the Galaxy A51, the fingerprint sensor is actually built into the display, and that's decently fast as well. I would say that the quickness of the fingerprint sensors on both phones are about equal, maybe slightly faster with the Moto G Power, but still, the A51 having this in-display fingerprint sensor is definitely very impressive for a budget device. Now one of the benefits with the Galaxy A51 is that we are getting face unlock as well, and that is not an option that's available here with the Moto G Power. So if you do want face unlock, the A51 is the only phone of the two that will get you that. Now taking a look at the backsides of both devices, we have quite a few cameras here. So with the Moto G Power, we have a 16 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. Compared to the Samsung Galaxy A51, where we're getting a 48 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera for close up photos. So here's how things look with the standard cameras on both devices. Now I have done detailed reviews on both phones and I definitely recommend going over to those various reviews to see the variety of photo and video samples that I've taken with these devices. But again, I feel like it's about a tie. I feel like they both take good looking photos and videos. Of course, one of the benefits with the A51 is that we are getting a higher megapixel count for the main camera and ultra wide angle camera. So at least for the main camera, having it be 48 megapixels 
does give you the ability to take some zoomed in photos with the digital zoom without too much of a decrease in quality. But again, here's how things look through the viewfinders on both phones. We can then switch over to the ultra wide angle cameras as well. And you can fit a lot more content into the frame here. So it is nice that both devices do offer that feature. Then you can go over to portrait mode as well. And you can get those nice blurred out backgrounds that I know all of us enjoy. And then flipping over to the front facing cameras on both devices, you get the same thing. So live focus portrait mode. Also, you can just take regular selfies as well. And with the Galaxy A51, we can even crop out a little bit with the front facing camera. So that's pretty good if you want to take a group selfie, for example. And then also flipping back over to the other side here, both phones do feature macro cameras. So again, the macro cameras are great for taking close up pictures. Now, one of the things that I do like about the macro camera with the Moto G power that we don't get with the Galaxy A51 is that when you are in the standard photo mode and you get close up to an object, you actually get this alert that pops up that tells you to tap on this to switch to macro. And then you can quickly switch over to that. I feel like even though that feature is here, you know, people might forget that their phone has the macro camera. So having that little pop-up alert, I feel like in practice will result in more people using the macro camera, which I feel like is a good thing overall. So both phones have four gigabytes of RAM, but with the Motorola Moto G Power, we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665, and with the Galaxy A51, we have the Samsung Exynos 9611 processor. Now, I did do a benchmark test here with both devices, and we'll take a look at the scores right now. And I am doing Geekbench 5 for all future benchmark testing, by the way. And you can see here, here are the scores. So with the Moto G Power, I got a single core score of 304 and a multi-core score of 1309, compared to the A51 where I got a single core score of 348 and a multi-core score of 1256. So the single core is higher with the A51, but the multi-core is higher with the Moto G Power. And in my opinion, I feel like the Snapdragon 665 is almost too good for a phone in this price range to have. And that's not a bad thing at all. I'm glad that Motorola gave us a very good processor here with the Moto G Power. Now the Exynos 9611 is good with the A51, but considering that this phone is technically a tier higher than the Moto G Power, I would have expected something at least a little bit more powerful, but for most people it will get the job done. So I would say as far as performance goes with these two phones, it's actually a tie. So even though the Moto G Power is a cheaper device compared to the A51, most often, you're going to have similar, if not better, performance with this phone. So that certainly does say a lot. Now, video recording with both devices maxes out at 4K with the rear cameras, which is awesome. Now, as far as the battery capacity goes, there are some differences here. So the Moto G Power is part of Motorola's power lineup. And essentially, all those phones with that branding have a bigger battery than your typical smartphone. And with the Moto G Power, we have a 5,000 milliamp hour internal battery with 10 watt fast charging. And then with the Galaxy A51, we have a battery that's still pretty big, but a little bit smaller at 4,000 milliamp hours with 15 watt fast charging. So we are getting a bigger battery with the Moto G Power, and that's good for multiple reasons. First thing is you're going to get really good battery life with the Moto G Power. But another thing to consider too, is that as time goes on with any smartphone, the batteries will degrade. They will become less and less capable of holding a charge. So by starting off with an already incredible battery, probably more than most people need with the Moto G Power, the battery degradation is going to be a lot less noticeable as time goes on. So I'm definitely a big fan of that with this phone. I feel like you're going to get a lot of longevity out of this device. Now, same thing with the A51. The battery already is pretty big, so you won't run into too many issues with the battery becoming weaker over time, at least in a noticeable way. But I definitely do applaud Motorola for giving us a really big battery with the Moto G Power. Now the software on both devices is Android 10, and with the Moto G Power we do have kind of a stock variant of Android here on the device, whereas with the Samsung Galaxy A51, the phone does feature Samsung's One UI 2.0. So 
Pretty thick skin here, but if you are familiar with Samsung devices, then it will be very familiar to you. But now that we've gone over the main specifications of these two devices, let's compare the hardware here. So I already talked quite a bit about the front panels here, but we are getting a much better display with the A51, without a doubt. So AMOLED or OLED in general is better than LCD, in my opinion at least. I know that some people talk about burn-in, but I've had this phone for about six months so far, actually more like eight months, but I've had this phone for a little while now and I have not noticed any sort of burn-in. So I'm totally happy with the display. And you can see here again, the form factor is pretty good on both phones. I do like that both feature the hole punch for the front facing camera. It does seem a little bit smaller though with the A51, which is always a good thing. And then the bottom bezel is also smaller with the A51. Now both phones do feature an all plastic build besides the displays. But with that being said, they do still feel very solid. So on the left side of both phones, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the right of both phones, we have the volume button and power button. Then up top, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have the USB-C port for charging and data transfer. We have the microphone and we have the speaker. Now, one of the benefits though with the Moto G Power is that we are getting stereo speakers and we're not getting that with the A51. We're just getting the one speaker on the bottom. But with the Moto G Power, we get the speaker on the bottom and when you're listening to music or watching a video, for example, audio also comes out of the earpiece. So that does give you a more immersive audio listening experience. And in addition to that, the audio itself is a lot louder. So that is really awesome. And I definitely do prefer that with the Moto G Power. And I'll tell you what, considering that the A51 is supposed to be a little bit more upmarket compared to the Moto G Power, the Moto G Power does offer a lot of its own benefits and you know different things that you don't get with the A51. So really these phones are extremely competitive, at least in real life usage, maybe not so much if you're comparing the prices, but yeah, the, I mean, there's there are a lot of really good reasons to get the Moto G Power, that's for sure. And then also I almost forgot to mention, taking a look at the back here, there's some differences in the sense that with the Moto G Power, we have more of a bean pod format for the cameras. And then we have the fingerprint sensor on the back. And then with the A51, we just have one rectangular camera module. And I do like this very bright blue color with the A51. It's pretty interesting. I mean, the Moto G Power looks nice as well, but this is a pretty flashy kind of unique color as well. So I think both handsets do look quite nice and I'm definitely happy with both of them. Let's now do a speed test comparison between these two devices. So we're gonna start by pulling up the camera apps on both. So one, two, three, go. And it looks like it's about a tie, maybe a little bit quicker in the A51, but pretty close with both phones. Next, we're gonna go to Google Chrome. So one, two, three, go. And definitely quicker there with the A51 at pulling up Chrome, but the Moto G Power wasn't too far behind. And again, you can see in this example, in this side-by-side, -side, the A51 certainly does have the brighter display of the two. Even though both phones do have the displays cranked up at 100%, the A51 certainly is a bit brighter. Let's now go to yahoo.com, one, two, three, go. Looks like it was about a tie there, really. I mean, both devices were quick at pulling up this website. Let's now go to Engadget. So one, two, three, go. And it looks like, again, very quick on both phones and maybe a little bit quicker that time with Moto G Power, but really, I mean, pretty much the same there. Scrolling is very smooth on both, maybe even a little bit smoother on the Moto G Power. We'll scroll down to an article to pull up. We'll go to this one. One, two, three, go. And it looks like the Moto G Power was the quicker of the two at pulling up this article. So again, you know, very impressive performance there at the Moto G Power. And I think in general, both phones do offer a solid level of performance considering that they are budget devices. So in conclusion, which of these phones is the better choice of the two? Now, when I was saying earlier that the A51 is a little bit more upmarket compared to the Moto G Power, that's based off MSRP. Now, if you go to your local carrier store and you check and see what deals they're offering, assuming they sell both of these phones, then you might be able to snag a really good promo 
and maybe get like buy one, get one on the A51, for example, or maybe a deal like that for the Moto G Power. I'm not really sure. They're always running different promotions. So it really just depends on when you're inquiring about buying a phone. You know, that's where you get to see what the deals are. But the point is, is that, you know, I don't know exactly what you'll end up paying for either of these two devices, but it is possible in certain situations where you could get the A51 for a really good deal and maybe even get it cheaper than the Moto G Power. So just based off of the, the pure benefits of these two devices, I would say that, you know, in general, the A51 is better in every way, except that the battery is smaller, but it's still a big battery, but it's a little bit smaller than the Moto G Power. And then in some situations, I feel like the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 is better than the Exynos 9611 that the Galaxy A51 has. But beyond that, I mean, the A51 is better in all other ways. But again, who knows, you might be able to save a lot of money on the Moto G Power over the A51. So it just depends on, you know, what is being offered, what deals are available. But, you know, I would say that if you went with either of these two phones, you will be very happy. And it's really hard to look past the really large battery, though, with the Moto G Power. That's something that's especially exciting about this phone. But I hope you enjoyed this comparison between these two devices. Based on everything that I went over in this video, which of these two phones do you think is the better choice for you? I'm really curious. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and have a great rest of your day.